Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 21 of Days Gone By. The review series for Gran Turismo's pretty broad and pretty decent selection, it has to be said, of vintage and classic cars. We could always, of course, do with more, especially vintage cars, but the selection that we do have is still very strong and very useful, and also quite eclectic. Many of the cars don't necessarily fall within similar parameters, and that's very cool. Variety is a great thing, and Gran Turismo, especially back in the day, perhaps not so much now, but they have had a reputation for having a lot of variety of cars, road cars, race cars, old and new, various sizes, powers, weight, shape, etc. Now this particular car is a vehicle which some people do use, and it does certainly have something of a cult following alongside the Beetle and the Camper. In fact, Volkswagen is really good at making cult classic vehicles, cars which have a really strong following. But this particular model isn't necessarily as widely used on GT6 as some others. You certainly don't see anywhere near as many of these as you do Campers and Beetles. So the question is why? Because the vehicle in question is actually mechanically based on the Beetle. It's essentially just a restyled version of the Beetle, and the car is, of course, the Volkswagen Kármán Gear, a car which is very, very sought after these days as a collector's car. They fetch really good prices, and it's a nice car. It looks good, it's aged really well, and basically it just allows a bit more variation of the practical Beetle platform. The Beetle itself is hugely popular, but is very much focused in a certain way. It's very much a family vehicle. The Carmen Gear, although essentially the same car underneath, just kind of takes it a little bit more upmarket in its design. Now, as far as spec, the car doesn't really jump off the page at you very much. It doesn't sound that amazing. The engine is a 1.5 litre turbo, it's rear mounted, rear wheel drive. And even fully tuned, you're only looking at 187 horsepower. So that doesn't really sound that impressive, given how powerful some of the other cars are in this series. And I'm not just talking race cars. There are plenty of very, very powerful classic road cars on Gran Turismo. As far as torque, though, it's really good. Far more torque than power, in fact. 246 foot-pounds. And that is partially due to the fact that it is, of course, a boxer engine, or a horizontally opposed, aka flat engine, just like the Beetle, just like Subaru, just like Porsche. And the car is also very, very lightweight. A similar kind of weight to the Beetle, not surprisingly, 732 kilos, which is really light. And that's good, because when you haven't got a huge amount of power anyway, at least counteracting that with low weight will often solve the issue of a lack of performance from said power. Now, primarily due to that low weight, the horsepower per tonne is decent. It's not amazing, but it's decent, 255. And the PP, when fully tuned, sits at a reasonable 467. And you certainly wouldn't want it to go much higher than that due to the slightly underpowered nature of the car. Now, another thing that this shares in common with the premium Beetle in particular, is that the performance is a lot better than its on-paper power would probably have you assume. Given that you're only running a similar kind of power to something like a Honda Integra in its fully tuned form, so having the same power as a stock Integra from a fully tuned Beetle variant doesn't really sound that great. But what it does with that power is really good because this is one of those cars which and there are certainly others like it not just in the classic category but beyond that as well that really are a lot quicker than they feel they're not only quicker than they look on paper but they don't feel as fast as they actually are and this is definitely one of those cars around the Nuremberg ring for instance the average speed that you can go at, around the majority of the track at least, is far higher than it feels. The Carmen Gear doesn't really make a big show about its performance, it's understated. There's no fuss, there's no big noise, there's no crazy all over the place wheel spin or 
getting its tail out or anything crazy like that. You can of course make it step its tail out if you want to, or sometimes unintentionally as well due to the RR layout, but it's a lot quicker than it feels. A lot quicker. And due to the fact that it can take corners much quicker than something with, say, a lot more power, because you've got less power to deal with, your overall lap times, especially on really tight, self-contained tracks such as city tracks like Monaco or London, or tight conventional tracks such as Ascari, for instance, or Laguna Seca, you can get some pretty impressive lap times out of this car given its PP. Now, and although PP-wise it's not necessarily the strongest of cars, it can most definitely be beaten for its power. More specifically, it's very, very good. So, although I would definitely recommend it as a lower PP racer, say 450, 425, or even 400, I would recommend it even more so if you are limited in a lobby for power rather than just PP. Say, for instance, under 200 horsepower racing or under 180 horsepower racing. That's the kind of thing where this car will really shine, because for its power, it's very good. And to top it all off, the price of this car is only 21 grand, which for a classic, especially a classic as beloved as the Carmen Gear, is remarkable value. That really is dirt cheap, given how loved these cars and also how expensive these cars are in real life. So I would definitely recommend giving the Carmen Gear a chance, because it may just surprise you by how fun and useful it can be. But that's it for this particular episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.